The entire prologue of John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, which I read through verse 14, emphasizes the deity of Christ. The following outline from the MacArthur Study Bible is helpful in understanding the beginning of John's Gospel about Jesus the Christ, titled, The Incarnation of the Son of God. John breaks it up this way, his eternality, verses 1 and 2. Remember, we, I read, with God and was God. His pre-incarnate work, verses 3 through 5, creator, Jesus is the creator. His forerunner, verses 6 through 8, John the Baptist. His rejection, in verses 9 through 11. His reception, verses 12 through 13. And finally, as he categorizes it, his deity, verses 14 through 18, full of grace and truth. When reflecting on Christmas, consider recalling it in these nine ways, this season and next season, subsequent seasons. See, Christ-centered, not self-centered. Four words, easier said than done. We live in a high-tech world that has increased our multitasking capabilities and divided our attention spans. The true focus should be on Jesus, not self. It's so difficult during this holiday season to focus on Christ, from putting up the, getting the Christmas tree to putting up the Christmas tree, to baking cookies, to sending cards, to having church events, work events, etc. It's overwhelming. We focus on all those things, and God's honored in those things. But just to focus on Jesus, sometimes that can be real challenging in this high-tech world where we can seemingly do all sorts of things. We can text and email and be on social media, but we bounce from place to place to place, don't we? Don't we text, then we post, then we do this? And so it's so hard sometimes just to focus, just to have that undivided attention to focus on Christ and not our stuff. it's used, who uses it, what author, makes a world of difference. There's nuances in the Greek especially. The Apostle John, who was a part of the inner circle with Jesus, as we know, with Peter and James, understood the impersonal use of the word by the Greeks and wanted to portray his personal Savior to the, lo to the world. To this point, John MacArthur writes, the Apostle John borrowed the use of the term word, not only from the vocabulary of the Old Testament, but also from Greek philosophy, in which the term was essentially impersonal, signifying the rational principle of divine reason, mind, or even wisdom. John, however, imbued the term entirely with Old Testament and Christian meaning, and made it refer to a person, that is, Jesus Christ, strategically. The term word serves as a bridge word to reach not only Jews but also unsaved Greeks. John chose this concept because both Jews and Greeks were familiar with it. H. Holy and Historical The birth of Christ is one of the holy, holiest events in human history. As an important aside, the term Christ, a New Testament word, is a synonym to the term Messiah an Old Testament word. For Christians, this holiday, or holy day in this case, is a point in time when God the Son is born into this world. Subsequent historical events, such as the death and resurrection of Jesus, are fictitious stories if, if, the living word is never born to a virgin named Mary. A comparison would be in how one views the Old Testament book of Genesis. If Genesis is true, then the remaining 65 books of God's written word, the Bible, is true. That's really important. Genesis talks about the beginning of creation, the beginning of humankind, talks about our fall into sin. Jesus is mentioned in Genesis. Satan is mentioned in Genesis. If you throw away Genesis, you might as well throw away the rest of the Bible. It is not a storybook. It is factual, historical, very important. 
Although there are differing beliefs about when and where Jesus was born, his birth is universally accepted as historical fact. Several historians, including notable non-Christian ones, support this viewpoint. Take time to read anything of antiquity written by either Josephus, a Jewish historian, or by Tacitus, a Roman historian. R. Remarkable. God entering humanity as part of his plan to identify with us and save us from our sins is amazing, compassionate, providential, unbelievable, and certainly remarkable. So many words could be used to be described what he did for us. And remarkable is one of those words. Emmanuel, God is with us. For the first time in human history, God is represented in person and in the flesh or physically. This was dramatically different from God's prior ways of revealing himself, especially as we see in the Old Testament. As narrator of last Sunday's cantata at our church, I read, under any circumstances, the events surrounding the birth of Jesus would be dramatic. Mary and Joseph had already faced suspicion and scorn and danger. They had traveled far from home, and then Mary had to deliver her son in a stable. Yet this story is so much more. The baby was Emmanuel, God with us. He was the long-awaited Messiah. He was the Lamb of God, born sins to the cross. S. Self. due to the birth of Christ and of Christianity is unbelievable. From providing a way to God, to elevating the view of human life, to caring for the poor, to name a few contributions, Christmas is monumental in scope. A, a prime time for evangelism. Christmas and Easter are ideal times of the year to share the gospel message with those who would listen. During these holidays, we can easily share the message of God's love for humanity. It's appropriate time, it's an easy time. A lot of times folks go, there's, we all know people that go Christmas and Easter and that's it. So you're gonna have more people to talk to. The pastor is gonna be talking about the, the gospel. And it's just so easy in many respects. Those are ideal times to witness to the lost. They're going to have questions. We can be ready to answer those questions. Definitely pray for those people during those times. And S, sacrificial. We cannot forget about this important point. 
This was the first human step to the cross to save us of our sins. The Father sent the Son to redeem us. While we celebrate this wonderful time of year, let's keep in mind the fact that God demonstrating, demonstrated amazing love to us. He sacrificed everything. Jesus paid the ultimate price for our sins. By reflecting on Christmas properly, we can experience it in a profoundly meaningful way. Before continuing, listen to humorous and fictional top 10 list. Disclaimer, this is for fun. Do not try this at home. Top 10 things to say about a bad Christmas gift. Number 10, hey now, there's a gift. Nine, well, well, well. Eight, boy, if I had not recently shot up four sizes, that would have fit. Seven, this is perfect for wearing around the basement. Six, I sure hope this never catches fire. It is fire season, though. There are lots of unexplained fires. Five, if the dog buries it, I'll be furious. Four, I love it, but I fear the jealousy it will inspire. Three, sadly, tomorrow I enter the Federal Witness Protection Program. Two, to think. I vowed to give all the gifts I got this year to charity. And number one, I really don't deserve this. Do not try this at home. Some encouraging words from a devotional entitled Keeping It Personal, written by the late co-founder of Premier Designs Incorporated, Joan Horner. She writes, Good news. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. Busyness often prevents us from reflecting on the real reason for Christmas, which commemorates the birth of Christ. Yes, this is a celebration time, a time to be grateful for health, wealth, friends, food, and shelter. But it is more than that. It is also a time to thank our Heavenly Father for sending us a gift that cost Him so much and us nothing, a gift that gives us real peace and hope and that is available to all. Remember the good news of that angelic message, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born. Like the shepherds who came and found Jesus, we also can come and find him, not as, babe, not as a babe in the manger, but as our Savior who died and rose again and lives in heaven. Amid the activities and your sweet family togetherness, the beautiful spirit of Christmas can be smothered. So this year, give yourself a special gift, a few minutes of quiet time for reflecting on God's marvelous gift to us, making it personal. When will I take time? When will I take time to reflect on God's special gift to me? When reflecting on Christmas, consider recalling it in these nine ways. Christ-centered, not self-centered. Holy and historical. Remarkable. Emmanuel, God is with us. Selfless in emphasis. Timely. Monumental in scope. A prime time for evangelism. Sacrificial. When memorizing scripture, add this verse to your list. From our text, John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. To God be the glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the true meaning of Christmas. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to this earth to identify with us, to live with us, and to die for us. If there's anybody listening here or anywhere after this message is replayed, I pray for their salvation, God, if they don't know Jesus. I pray that we share the true meaning of Christmas during this time. We thank you for your amazing love. How could it be? Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
if you would.